Today on CTV News, wind warnings leave BC ferries stuck at the dock. We are canceling a number of sailings up and down the coast uh, for safety reasons. Multiple cancellations on the major routes starting tonight as BC Hydro warns trees could come down in Metro Vancouver. Plus, the new tires that we're uh, demonstrating uh, today as well as piloting over this winter have a little more of an aggressive tread on them. How TransLink is preparing for winter sooner to prevent a repeat of last year when more than a dozen buses were involved in snowy November crashes and... The mayor and his ABC team really kind of overpromised and kind of underdelivered. The train is back on the track in Stanley Park, but tickets are gone and if you're in a wheelchair, you can't ride. Why the park board blames the mayor. This is CTV News with Andrew Johnson. Good evening. Nafisa is off tonight. A number of ferry sailings have been cancelled as the south coast braces for a windstorm. And those gusts are expected to pick up in the next few hours. Warnings are up across Metro Vancouver. is surprisingly resilient to the harsh space environment. CTV News continues. Here's what's making news right now. We certainly apologize to our customers. Shooting in Marlboro caught on video. Injuring three people, including one critically. Plus, honoring their sacrifices. We should remember why we have all of the, the benefits that we have today. As Calgary prepares for Remembrance Day. It's tangible, it's real, you can see it. And Calgary's first downtown building conversion nears completion. CTV Calgary, local breaking news with Jordan Canigan and Camilla Di Giuseppe. Good afternoon. Three people are in hospital, one in critical condition after a shooting in the northeast community of Marlboro. Police are still piecing together what happened, but helping their investigation, the shooting was caught on camera. Tyler Barrow joins us live from the neighborhood where quite the scene played out. T Tyler. The Innisfail Art Club says it plans on doing another large project for Remembrance Day next year. Now here's Ian White with the CTV News at 6. Midnight shooting. Now on the CTV News at 5, building trusses and jobs. The new facility will provide us the option to double our production and staffing. A Fort McLeod facility is expanding thanks to a government fund. Plus, Barry Morshita steps down as head of the Alberta party. And the first ever transplant of its kind. And the mere fact that the eye's alive and looks healthy is pretty special. Telling your stories. CTV News Lethbridge with Jackie Scantlebury. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us this Friday. Legions across the country will be busy this Remembrance Day. While many are seeing memberships decline, Lethbridge's Legion is actually growing. Quinn Keenan has more. Day next year, Merrick DeCash, CTV News, Innisfail. Well, that is our show for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you so much to those who have served for our country. We'll see you back here Monday. An 11 year old boy was intentionally targeted in a shooting along with his father. This line in the sand with, with organized crime, that's just changed. Plus, sticker shock at the grocery stores as people look for ways to cut down on the costs of groceries. Everything's like gold. The biggest thing I noticed was lettuce, like $4.99 for a little tiny piece of uh, romaine. 
And the final score, San Jose 3, Edmonton 2. Edmonton Oilers players and management in the hot seat after a loss to the worst team in the league. Looks like the mild temperatures will stick around right through the weekend. Uh, somewhere in the 5 to 10 degree above average range. CTV Edmonton, local breaking news with Nariman Issa. Good evening. Police say the shooter who killed a man and his 11-year-old son outside a southeast Edmonton gas station knew the boy was there and intentionally fired at him. They also say the father had been targeted prior to this and was well known to gang and drug investigators. David Iwasik reports. Blessings for sure, but um, it, this will definitely be the end. <laughs> Stay with us for more local breaking news. CTV News at 6 with Jeff Hastings starts right now. Tonight, an 11-year-old boy killed along with his father. Tonight, a special thanks from Shania Twain for a Saskatchewan town. The country star said the town of Indian Head was instrumental in helping her stage crew after their bus crashed earlier this week. And communities around the province prepare to mark Remembrance Day. This is CTV News with Cole Davenport. Hello and welcome to CTV News at 5. Shania Twain played her first concert Thursday since crew members were part of a rollover on Highway 1 in southeastern Saskatchewan on Wednesday. One small town school earned themselves a shout out from the country star for their fast action and local hospitality. Donovan Mace has more. More eruptions in the area occur, so keep an eye out for that. Finally for us, a programming note for you. Starting next week, CTV News will be launching a 5.30 daily national newscast anchored by a longtime figure in Canadian news, Sandy Ronaldo, bringing you the top news stories in Canada and from around the world. Our regular local newscasts will continue at 5 and 6 o'clock sharp. We hope to see you there. That's where we'll leave it tonight. CTV News continues in a moment. I'm Marilyn Caruso. It's Friday, November 10th. Today... Sport is supposed to be safe, so it's difficult for the entire community. A hockey Manitoba coach charged following a sexual exploitation investigation. Also today, playing catch up. What you need to know as Manitoba Public Insurance digs through its backlog and waiting in agony. She gave Geff and her daughter to her husband and said, you can take, you stronger, you can run faster with her. Friends and family of those taken hostage in Gaza come together. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. A woman who police say until recently was a coach with Hockey Manitoba is facing several charges following a sexual exploitation investigation involving a player. Standing by in studio with the details for us is CTV's Taylor Brock. Taylor, what do we know? Under Diwali tradition, colorful clay lamps are lit in rows with houses and temples. Fireworks are also typically sparked during the festival, signifying gratitude for health, wealth, knowledge, peace and prosperity. Additionally, colorful patterns are created in entranceways of homes. CTV News at 6 starts now. Tonight. Today on CTV News at 5, new community smart grid. The leadership uh, that PUC has shown in moving towards being the first community in Canada with a fully smart grid is enormous. The Prime Minister comes to Sault Ste. Marie. The Supreme Court rules. Canada's High Court determines that the city of Sudbury was the employer at a job site when a pedestrian was killed. And an astronaut lands in Sudbury. To be able to record their own journeys and to record the journeys of other things that live on the planet at the same time that they're living on the planet. CTV News at 5 with Tony Rima, Jessica Gosselin and Rick Wyman with weather. Good afternoon. So glad you could be with us on this Friday. Jessica is away. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was in Sault Ste. Marie today, and part of his visit was to officially launch what's being called Canada's first smart grid electricity system. The Prime Minister took part in a ribbon-cutting ceremony for 
A 23-member panel of experts in the study of play chose the toys from a list of 12 finalists they believe made the greatest impact. More than 80 toys have earned their spot in the Hall of Fame. And folks, that's CTV News at 5. CTV News at 6 starts right now. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here on CTV News at 5. It may have you raising an eyebrow. A new magic mushroom dispensary has opened its doors in Cambridge. Located on King Street in Preston, it's part of the growing chain called Fungies, which has locations spread across the province. Yeah, very interesting story. While magic mushrooms are still illegal in Canada, that hasn't stopped the chain from expanding, even after they've seen multiple police raids at their locations. The perfect time to bring us CTV's Hannah Schmidt and Hannah, the owner speaking out after the most recent raids at their other stores that happened across the province. Stepping onto that ice for the first time has to be just the greatest accomplishment feeling ever. Congrats mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it for us. Happy Friday, everyone. Have a great weekend. CTV News at 6 with Tegan Versalotto starts now. Tonight, a touching moment in an airport terminal. Happy is very small word uh, compared to my fear. It is like it's it's biggest day in my life. A man holds his newborn child for the first time at Pearson after they escape from Gaza. There's a yearning for peace. There's yearning for, for life. Toronto Mayor Olivia Chow calls for the return of hostages and a ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war. While the two people do appear to know each other, the extent of that relationship is unknown at this time. And a woman is dead after a stabbing inside a South Etobicoke condo. We'll have the latest coming up. The flags themselves are phenomenal to see, just phenomenal. It ch changes the, uh, the scenery tremendously. You don't see sights like that. Remembering those who served Operation Raise a Flag at Sunnybrook Veterans Center. I'm Bakari Savage. And I'm Lena Latifat. Thank you for joining us and welcome to Live at Five. An interfaith vigil is being held outside the Israeli consulate on Bloor Street this evening where participants are calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. And for the latest on the demonstration, let's go live to CP24's Lindsay Biscay. Lindsay. Kickoff tomorrow at BMO Field is set for 3 p.m. All right, with that, it's 559, 8 degrees. This is Toronto's Breaking News, CP24. Thank you for joining us. CTV News at 6 is next. Have a great weekend. Now on CTV News at 5, an Ontario man greets his wife and meets his newborn baby for the very first time after the two were finally able to leave Gaza. CTV News at 5 starts right now. Good afternoon, this is CTV News at 5. I'm Matt Scooby. Unspecified anti-Semitic messages have been found at the general campus of the Ottawa Hospital. The latest on what we know is just ahead. Also coming up. Some commemorations happening in the city ahead of Remembrance Day tomorrow. Details on who was honored at City Hall today. The nominations for the Grammy Awards are out. SZA leads the list with nine, but Taylor Swift has set a new record. We'll break it all down coming up later in Trending. First at five, the Ottawa Hospital says anti-Semitic messages and gasoline were found in an area inside the general campus this week. CTV's Kimberly Fowler joins us now with the latest from what the hospital are saying, as well as police. Kimberly. The British actor plans to sell off his personal Star Wars collection too, including some original scripts. CTV News continues with Graham Richardson and Patricia Bull. Here's what's making news. Parents on Edge. 
as Montreal police investigate after the discovery of bullet holes at Jewish schools. It's a rough day, I'm not going to lie. Uh, we, we, we wondered, me and my wife, if we should bring our, our six and a half year old son who goes to school here, if we should keep him home. CTV News with Maya Johnson. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. There is a pro-Palestinian demonstration tonight at Dorchester Square downtown. And Matt Grillo joins us from location. Matt, the protesters are gathering and this is set to get underway any minute now. Cooper wants people convicted of murder to only be eligible to apply for parole every five years. That's it for us for continuing coverage and more on all the day's top stories. Here's Mitsumi and CTV News at 6. Fearing for the children. Tonight on CTV News at 5. You never know your destination at that point in time, but ultimately they ended up in Holland. Brotherly love. Junior Jackson lied about his age so he could track down his big brother Buster Paris during the liberation of Holland. Tears shed and some happy smiles. Propelling history, an important war artifact rises from the ashes in New Brunswick. We all love to try to participate and help in raising uh, funds. Hockey Helps the Homeless, a growing fundraiser featuring former NHLers, tackles a growing problem. Live from the Maritimes News Centre, this is CTV News at 5 with Maria Panopalis and Jason Baxter. Good evening and welcome to CTV News at 5. I'm Maria Panopalis. I'm Jason Baxter. Thank you for joining us. First at 5, never forget. Another Remembrance Day is almost here and with it, time for sober reflection on our brave veterans and their sacrifices. As CTV's Laura Brown shows us, today's veterans say it's important to honour the Canadian vets who came before them, even as they face unique challenges in the presence. Laura? Dad wasn't a very tall man, but on those days he stood six foot six. Oh my goodness, what mm. a story. Amazing. Percy's not wrong. It really no. does read like a movie. No, so many great athletes in the family, and they get a lot of that from Buster, who was a fantastic baseball player, so much so that he was being actively recruited by the Brooklyn Dodgers once wow. upon a time. His son, John Paris Jr., the trailblazing hockey coach that we've yes, featured, featured on the show yeah. many times before. He's another one of the siblings, the first black hockey coach to win a major North American championship. What? What an accomplished family, what mm -hmm. a family with grit, mm -hmm. you know, with so much motivation yep. and so much, so much to give and, and thank you for that. And we thank, of course, your, your, your father and your uncle for their service. Yeah, the other thing that the, uh, the pair of siblings told me and, and really, really came across is that, you know, seven kids, but their doors were always open. You needed food, come on in. You needed shelter, come on in. You just want to, <laughs> you know, spend some, some downtime with us, you're always welcome. Love that. Thank you so much for watching. Our news continues with Todd Battis. Thank you, Murray and Jason. It's Friday, November 10th. Here's what's making news tonight.